Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulk Gun. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint a Primaris Assault Intercessor. So the first colour we're using is Vallejo Black, but any black that you have will do the trick. It's going to be for the main parts of the Knight of the Chalice, it's going to be the bolt casing. He's also going to have the trim of his shoulder pads, all the little seals between his armour plates, and his helm. Also the main part of the chainsword, like the body of the chainsword. Now it does look like there's a section of this video missing where I painted the armour plates with Citadel Mephist on red. So once you've finished the black on the miniature, go back and just paint his power armour with Mephist on red. Now I've got a quick one, we're just going to be using a little bit of Citadel Rakarth flesh just to paint the parchment parts on the purity seal on his backpack here. Now depending on which assault intercessor you're using, maybe somewhere else because they are placed on different parts of them. Next up, a little tiny bit of corn red, just to do the actual wax part of the seal. So give that a quick coat, and you can move on to the next one. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Mornfang Brown. This is going to be to do his belt and all the pouches around his waist. Once you've got them down, it's on to the next colour. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. This is going to be to do the rest of the bolt pistol and also the chainsword, the tubes on his helm and some parts of his power pack. I do really like these assault intercessors. I think the poses on them are great. Really, really dynamic models. They fit quite nicely with all the other stuff from Indomitus 2. I've been really impressed with the latest releases for the Space Marines. Also a lot of good stuff coming for the Necrons too. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Retributor armour. I'm going to paint the cross on his forearm here. I'm also going to use this to paint the cross piece on the sword, the name of which I can't remember, and also the pommel of the sword as well. I don't actually paint these here, I paint them a bit later on. But you're going to be painting the pommel and the cross piece of the sword in the same way that you paint this gold piece. So give them a coat of paint now. Ignore the fact that the other bits are red for a little bit longer. Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Abelan Sunset. I'm going to use this to do the lenses on his helm. I'll also come back to using this colour and do the little wires that you've got on his arms and on one of his feet. So you can do this now if you want to. Now we're moving on to the shades, and it's going to be Citadel Druchy Violet as the first shade. You're going to be using this to paint the armour, all of the red armour. Now with the lighter colours I'll usually just try and get it in the creases, but with red and using the Druchy Violet I will try and cover the whole armour with it. Because it means you can get some nice easy shading and kind of blending going on when you start putting the red back on. Just so you get the darker parts underneath and the lighter parts on the top. Next shade that we're going to be using is Citadel Caro Bird Crimson. We're going to be using this just to paint the purity seal, the wax part on his back. Like so. Now a tiny little bit of Citadel Seraphim Sepia just to paint the parchment on the purity seal. Now a little bit of Citadel Agrax Earthshade, I'm going to use this to paint the gold. Like so. A little bit of Citadel Caroberg Crimson Shade just to paint the lenses. A 
with that done, it's on to the next colour. Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Northern Oil. I'm just going to use this to paint the little plug in his thigh there. Now we're going to use some Citadel Nuln Oil Gloss on all the rest of the metallics. The reason I use the normal Nuln Oil on that little plug is just because sometimes the gloss, while it works well on bigger areas, on smaller bits, it sometimes doesn't seem to sit too well on them and doesn't bring out the detail as much as I'd like. So give these a good coat of it. We can move on to the next colour. Going back to Citadel Nuln Oil, I'm just going to use this to paint all of the leather. I have been playing around with a different technique for the leather, but I am keeping this pretty much the same as I used to do it, just because I've started using it on these miniatures, so I'll keep it like that, but you will see the new leather one in the next week or two. So now we're going to return to his armour, we're going to start using Citadel Mephist on red. Need this to recolor the armor. So when you're painting this on, you want to be thinking about where the light's coming down. So like on the underside of his legs, on the underside of his arms, you're not going to be painting this color all the way around them. You're going to be leaving that shaded area underneath, just to give that added shade effect. Because of the pose of this model, it's quite good as well. You'll see that shade effect once the miniature's painted how it looks. So now we're going to start highlighting, we're going to use Evil Sun Scarlet to begin with. And you want to be painting about 50% of the area that you covered with the Mephist on red. And you're going to be covering the sections which are going to be getting the most light. So in the case of usually where the more vertical, you'd be doing that V shape on the bottom of the power pack. Because he's at an angle here, I've left the shade going down sort of almost diagonally through the purity seal because that's where the shade of that central piece would be. You can see how that kind of emphasizes it, emphasizes the shade. So to highlight we're going to use Citadel Squig Orange. I'm just going to use this to edge highlight all the areas that be catching the light. So the top edges, the ridges and details. You are going to do the bottom edges around the chest piece where the Aquila is, mainly because of where the light would be catching those, they'd have the shade from the sections above, from the plate above it, so you will be highlighting the bottom part of the chest piece, and also the pieces across his stomach too. So now I'm going to use a little bit of Abeland Sunset, I'm going to paint these little wires. I say this is the bit that we could have done earlier on, but I failed to. I'm just going to reapply the colour to those lenses too. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Uriel Yellow. I'm just going to highlight the top surfaces of the wires and also do a little crescent on the back quarter of the eye lenses. Like so. Now I'm going to add some white to the Uriel Yellow. I'm just going to do a tiny little crescent highlight on those lenses. Due to being a little closer on these bits, but it is just like a little crescent at the very back end of the lens, on the bottom part of it. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo White, just to do a final little tiny crescent the back and then a white spot at the front of the lens. I'm 
Next up, we're going to use some Vallejo Black. I'm going to use this to paint some stripes on those little yellow wires. I find the best way to do these is to paint one diagonal line to start with, and then paint the line beneath it diagonal, and just sort of start doing a few little diagonal lines and then filling in the blanks between it. It's so like so there you can see doing the top one, then try and do another one almost at exactly the same angle, and then you can spread them round if the wire bends. So now I'm going to start working on the pouches and the belt. I'm going to return to Citadel Mournfang Brown. I'm going to add this colour back to the majority parts of it, leaving some of that Agrax Earth shade in the recesses. Also on the flat parts of the holster, there is some slight indentations. You want to leave the shade in the recesses for that too. Like so. Now we've added a little bit of Citadel Ricard flesh to the Mournfang Brown. I'm going to start highlighting all the pouches and the belt. Now to do this you want to sort of do quite straight rough edges. When I say straight I mean when you're doing a vertical line you'll be doing straight lines in a horizontal way but quite rough so it doesn't form a complete straight line. You can see here the way it looks a bit more scuffed and a bit haphazard with those lines and that's what you're going for as the corners of the holster and the pouches and the belt have been scuffed and scraped and it's revealed the lighter leather underneath. So we're going to add a little bit more Citadel Ricard flesh to the previous mix. I'm going to do one more layer of highlights on that. Again you're going to carry on doing the rough edges and scuffs to it. Once you've finished those, it's on to the next colour. So now I'm going to use Citadel Corn Red, and this is going to be to do the wax section of the Purity Seal. So you want to make sure that you're leaving some of the Caribou Crimson in recesses. We're getting a reasonable layer on there. Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Wasdaka Red, just to highlight that wax section. You want to make sure that you're going for the top edges to give that the highlights. Going to add a little tiny bit of white to the Wasdaka Red. If you've got it, you can use Citadel Pink Horror for this as well. Just to add one final little highlight to the wax sections. Now we're going to use Citadel Ricard Flesh and we're going to recolour the Purity Seal parchments at the back here. So you do want to leave the Seraphim Sepia in all the recesses and you want to try and leave some of the shade in the areas where the Purity Seal kind of bumps out and then it's got the recess bit below it. You just want to be highlighting those top parts. So we're going to be adding some white to the Citadel Ricard Flesh here. And just highlighting the bits that we've just done. Again, you want to make sure you're leaving the shade in the recesses. And just highlighting the areas of the parchment which will catch the most light. And once more, we're going to add some white to the previous mix. And just highlight them again. Now I'm going to use Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm going to reapply the colour to the pommel and also the cross on his arm and the cross piece on the chain sword. Now you can see on this one that I still haven't painted that. It's because I realised a little bit later on that I've just completely forgotten about it. So if you've painted that cross piece on and you've a Grax Earth shaded it, then you can do the Retributor Armour for that. It's basically using the same gold technique as the pommel and the cross. Now we're going to use some Citadel Liberator Gold, and we're just going to highlight that. So when you're highlighting the gold, you want to think about where the light's going to hit it, where it's going to reflect it and give it the most shine. So you're going to be looking at the top edges and the very corners and any of the little details on there that you can highlight. 
You do want to make sure that you've got the Retributor armor and some of the shade remaining there. Now we're going to add a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome. We're going to mix that with the Liberator Gold. And that just gives us a nice light shade that we can highlight all those edges with. So it's going to be mainly the top edges. And you're just going to use that to add a little bit more shine. That's onto the black now. We're going to use some Vallejo German Grey to highlight the black. So using the German Grey in a similar way to that you did with the Evil Sun Scarlet. So you want to be highlighting about 50% of the way down on things. So we've got the curve of his helmet there. You are going to be painting the top kind of 50% of that curved area. You're also going to be painting underneath the eyes and any of the little details that stick out like around where the ear parts are. Then doing the same for the piping between the armor plates and also the trim on his shoulders. Also the bolt pistol and the chainsword. And once you've done that, you're going to be using the Mechanica Standard Grey to highlight the areas that you've just done. So you have used this German Grey on the Aquila in the middle here. When you're doing the Aquila, you're leaving the black in the recesses. You're using German Grey for the most part on each of the feathers and the skull. Then you're using the Mechanica Standard Grey to highlight those areas. I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome just to put in the little silver sections on the bolt pistol here. I'm using an Army Painter Wargamer character brush here. It's got a really, really fine point. I'm just using that to do the little silver stripes in there. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo Black. We're going to start doing the iconography and the text on the back here. So we're going to do some horizontal lines to represent text on a purity seal. Now we're going to start painting the chalice on his shoulder. He's from the Knights of the Chalice chapter. Once you've finished that, we're going to come back with a little bit of Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. You're just going to paint those lines between the top of the chalice and also the top and the bottom of the middle section of the chalice. Like so. Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Mephisto on red. And this is just to do the line underneath the chalice. Just to bring the colour of the shoulder pad back on. And straighten that off nicely. Like so. So now we're going to work on his knee pads and we're going to do his squad number. So he's going to have the black knee pad and he's going to have a white blood drop shape on that to indicate he's one of the 13th squad. So now using a little bit of Vallejo German Grey just to highlight the top of that knee pad. Now I'm going to use a little bit of the white to do that teardrop. When I started here, I was using a little bit of white that must have been in the wet palette for a while. It's dried out a little bit, so change that over, get some fresh stuff. Now we can paint that on properly. Like so. Now, because he's going to be close support, he's going to have that yellow knee pad, because I said earlier in different videos for the Knights of the Chalice, I'm doing their 
roll designation on the knee pad rather than being the helmet colour. If you did it as the helmet colour, then most of the Knights of the Chalice would have a different colour helmet to the black one, which is what separates them from the kind of Blood Angels look. Just going to highlight that with a bit of Uriel Yellow. Like so. Now we're going to use a tiny little bit of Vallejo White and we're going to do one teardrop on the shoulder pad in white. This will show you part of the third company. Like so. Is that finished? That's the last part of the tutorial. And here you can see the finished Knights of the Chalice Assault Intercessor. Really happy with how he turned out. Love the dynamic pose of these figures. Really did enjoy painting them. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, please feel free to go to our coffee page linked below and buy us a brew.